the chart. So there's your, your conscious mind, and then there is the subconscious. So there is you and somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. And we'll just do our, I am. So this is you, this is somebody else, right? So your, I am is your soul, your spirit, higher self, whatever labels you wish to use. This is your conscious mind, right? So I have one, uh, this person has one, this person has one, this person has one. Then there is the, the subconscious. Now this is the first, and again, this, this like, I guess initially it, it can really warp your brain. But, and you've heard me say this before, what's really interesting is these concepts are not new. These understandings, and again, like peer-reviewed uh, studies and research, and it goes on and on and on. They, you know, the, the uh, oh goodness, the neuroscientists and things like this, they have no problem with this concept. It's just, well, of course that's true. So just this first, this first comment, um, this first fact really is, you have a conscious mind, I have a conscious mind, but there is one subconscious mind. See, and that's where the connectedness happens. So, so when, when you look out at your, your external experience and I look out and somebody else looks out, we each have our own unique experiences of the external stimulus. But we're all in the same pool here. And the way I like to explain it, <laughs> it's really accurate analogy, actually, is this is a swimming pool. And you're in the swimming pool, I'm in the swimming pool, this other person's in the swimming pool. So this is the water that's around me, and you have water that's around me, you, but we're all in the same swimming pool. Now, <clears throat> interesting throat chakra. If I pee in the pool, it's going to be concentrated around me, but it can also migrate and navigate uh, throughout the entire pool when you think about it. Now, even that truth just shakes everything in so many ways. So a lot of you folks here are, are Reiki practitioners or some type of healing practitioner and things like that. And, and this is where this whole thing about distance healing often kind of trips us up. Because when we, we think about distance healing, we think about I am here and you are over there. And when I give you a treatment, I'm sort of reaching out somehow and connecting to you. But what's really happening is the connecting is happening in here. So it's not so much that we're reaching out over distance. In many ways, when you're doing a quote unquote distance treatment, you're, you're pointing this way. Which is why it's, oh, I didn't plan on teaching this, but we'll just go there. Which is why these stories that we tell ourselves about somebody else are so powerful. Because all joking aside, it's peeing in the pool. And here's the, um, I guess the, the two sides of an increased awareness and also meditation. So one of the things that happens when, when we're in that meditative state is we have greater conscious access to this. Now, what does that mean? That means that the thoughts that I am thinking, the stories that I'm telling myself, the internal dialogue that I'm nurturing, that I'm focusing on, not every errant thought that goes through my mind, but the, the flavoring or the theme of the thoughts that I'm thinking about or focusing on are actually gonna radiate out into the subconscious. And if it's something about this person, guess what happens? It's gonna make its way to there. Which is why, and you've heard me say this too, with increased awareness and increased privileges comes increased responsibilities. Because the thoughts that you are consistently thinking, right? And remember that, it's not like every thought that goes into your head, right? It's the theme of thoughts. What's the consistent story 
you tell yourself or you tell yourself about somebody or something else. Not, not every line in the story. But what's the theme? What's that theme of the story that you keep telling? Because that's going to radiate out from you in a more powerful, better way to say it, with more clarity. And with clarity comes power. And that other person is going to feel it. Whether they're conscious of it or not, they probably won't be conscious of it, but they are going to feel it. Now, does that mean we can control their thoughts? Absolutely not. But what it does mean is that information is migrating through and past them, and you just never know when they may grab hold of it and make it their own. So, as this information is flowing over here, right, about this person, you never know when they may actually choose to make it their own, and now it is their own. And so, well, we can't control somebody else's thinking. We can send that program out. And therefore, and then the chances of them picking that program up are a lot greater. It's always their choice. But if the program's never being broadcast, how could they possibly hear it? This, this isn't my analogy. It's used all over the place. That your mind, your conscious mind, is very much like a broadcaster and a receiver. So it's broadcasting this message. It's broad, excuse me, it's broadcasting this program. And if you broadcast the program, somebody or somebody's just may tune into it. Now, again, you don't have any control whether they do tune into it, but... If you're never broadcasting the program, then they're never going to be able to tune into it, which is why, wow, this is interesting, which is why consistency, which is why perseverance, which is why bullheaded stubbornness is so powerful and so valuable. Because if you, th you think about this, if you're broadcasting this program, and if you broadcast it, so it's, a, it's a, a radio station. So if you're only sending that, that programming out for like, I don't know, an hour of the day, I'm just making up times now, the chances of that other person picking it up are pretty slim. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do it 24 hours a day. It's about consistency, not constancy. And for me, it's, what it's really about is clarity. It's about in your conscious mind, your conscious mind, being aware, oh, interesting, okay. Being aware of what are the stories, what are the themes of the stories that you're telling about yourself and about others. Because your subconscious, better said, the subconscious, is always absorbing. It's always absorbing what you choose to focus on. Not so much every errant thought that goes through your awareness, but it's those stories the themes of your thoughts, the consistent themes of your thoughts. That's what the subconscious mind is absorbing and taking in. And as you consistently send out that signal, send out that signal, send out that signal, send out that signal, not constantly, right? Consistently and with clarity. And when the stories start to shift, and it's not playing the music that you want to send out, well, then change the music. See, that's the power of your conscious mind. It has the ability to choose what it focuses on. Oops. The subconscious doesn't. It takes whatever you give it and starts to radiate it out. But your conscious mind, this isn't my, I hear this all the time, very much is like the gatekeeper. So what it does is it goes, okay, do I want to focus on the theme of this thought? Oh, there we are. Um, <laughs> My window is really narrow, so that comment come in and it's, oh, there we are. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Uh, how can they believe unless they hear the message? Oh, yeah. That, that, well, there you go. And that's the thing, right? I think that that is so true. And that's where we trip our, um So an intercessor, right? That Then this often is called intercessory prayer. What are we doing, right? Is We're sending out that signal. We're sending out that program. and And the whole thing about, again, choosing... Like, let's, like taking the position of the solution, of it, uh, the wish already fulfilled, of the prayer already answered. I mean, it's just, there's a hundred different ways of saying the same damn thing. Thinking from the end, how do you wish to see that person go, well, 
Well, who do you think you are trying to control the other person? No, you can't control the other person. But you can send the signal out. You can send the program out. And then they're going to choose what they're going to do with it. But just as you said, Ellie, that's so perfectly. If you're not sending the program out, whoa, huh, then who will? Right? And I think, I, figured, I did not plan on doing this. Because it's so easy, especially now, to tell stories, like the thoughts in our mind, the dialogues that go on that are not edifying at all. Maybe they never have been. But we can tell a different story on their behalf. In the master's class, I'm pretty sure I actually even use the word intercessor. And in many respects, we're not doing a treatment or giving a treatment to them. We're interceding on their behalf with the subconscious, and we'll just stick with that for now. Telling a better story, a better feeling story, a more edifying story, a more solution referenced story about them. And as we send that signal out, and send it out, and send it out, and send it out, and send it out, the chances of them hearing it are a lot greater if we never sent it out in the first place. What I believe now, what I've heard now, is that our ability to influence change, not control, but to influence change, probably has never been greater, at least in our lifetime. And, and this is the time. Tell that better feeling story about your life, too, about your life experience, and about those around you because we are far more powerful than we realize and for our purposes here where does that power come from it comes from the clarity of the story that you tell all right guys